Welcome to episode two of Lunchbox Sociables with, Welcome. with Leo Troy. Hi. Uh, what are we talking about today, Leo? <laughs> I got to work on my wave. <laughs> Like uh, like the like the uh, prime minister in, uh, in uh, Love Actually. In Love Actually. We got a whole we can do a whole episode on that. <laughs> Favorite soundtrack. Uh, the two handed wave. Yeah, it is the two handed wave. <laughs> Uh, nothing in particular, a little bit of everything, uh, continuing on from, uh, episode one. Okay. We have, and we also have a few mailbag questions that we'll get to as well. We got a lot of mailbag questions. Okay. Okay. All right. So Leo, tell us what have you learned or what did you learn after uh, recording episode one? Well, um, this was uh, a lot tougher than I thought, uh, although this really isn't that tough. It's, this is really tough. <laughs> <laughs> I ask hard questions. You don't ask easy questions. Uh, well, some are easy, but uh, so they, come, uh, they come pretty quick. And I, I learned that these lights are really bright. There's 600 LEDs, 600 LEDs, and you won't let me wear glasses. Because you're not Bono. Yeah, but I'm going to be squinting like uh, Clint Eastwood here shortly. <laughs> and that uh, I sound a lot like Justin Trudeau. You sound nothing like Justin Trudeau. And the more that I enunciate, I think I to make it myself clear, I think I sound even more like Justin Trudeau. <laughs> Tell the people of Manitoba to go see the people of uh, Schwinnigan. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Leo. We have some questions from the mailbag. Mailbag. Yeah, there were uh, lots of really great responses to your very first video. People are interested in hearing what you have to say. Good. So a couple questions. I can't believe came. I just did that. Yeah, a couple <laughs> questions just came up. So Jeff in Bowmanville has asked. Hey Jeff. What are those in-ear monitors? Oh, um, I use uh, Sure Two Fifteens. Uh, I'd never used uh, in-ear monitors before. I'm always, uh, I was always used to using over the head uh, uh, headphones or cans. Uh, these are Sennheisers and I love these. I love these uh, headphones. Um, but these in-ear monitors, uh, they're not the wireless ones. I, I didn't want to spend big bucks on wireless until I got used to it. It takes a little while to get used to them. Um, but they have, uh, they have really good sound. They come with different little sponges depending on the size of your ear. But I gotta tell you, it took a little while to figure out, actually it took a little while to figure out, uh, which was right and left because they put a little, uh, put a little dot, a little red dot on one and a little blue dot on the other. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't red right? Oh. I always assume that red is right. Okay, well, but then maybe, there you go. Yeah. Let's see. I'll tell you in a second <laughs> because I end up labeling them and uh, right, uh, uh, right is red. <laughs> okay. Yes. So there you go. Right is red. Right is yeah. uh, right is kind of like on a ship. Okay. Right. So Starboard port. You get you get uh, used to them. I uh, um, like I said, I, I got the the wired ones. Yeah. Um, are those did, molded to your ears or are they generic? They are. Oh, yeah. These are generic. Uh, and, but you have to mold the wire to go around so it fits in your ear. And I thought, uh, worst case scenario, uh, I would just use them. I could always just use them with my, uh, with my Gen 3. <laughs> I don't like Apple, but I love you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so what is the benefit? Like, why would someone use the in-ear... Um, it really helps block out the other sounds that, uh, uh, like, it's, you know, the, there's so many other musicians are playing different things, and you just want to be able to hear just like as a as a singer, uh, you want to hear just you. You need to hear you in your head. That way, you don't get uh, you don't get drowned out. You need to be able to to hear the vocals and maybe a couple other instruments, maybe your guitar, or something to sing to. But you really need to be able to uh, to hear your vocal. Can you I, have different things in each ear? Like, can you program it so that like one ear gives you your vocal oh, yeah. and the it, other ear gives it, you your click track, for example? Depending on how powerful your home system is or how powerful is the PA system is at a, a club that you're playing, you can say, okay, I want a stereo mix in my left ear. I want one thing in the right ear. I want uh, something else. But uh, I was, I'm quite happy. Uh, I'm quite happy with these. You get a little weird with the, the wires, but I'm quite happy. So okay. anyway, thanks, Jeff. The next question is from Grace from New York State. And uh, Grace wants to know, was that apple juice or booze that you were drinking in the <laughs> last uh, in the last episode? <laughs> booze. Uh, uh, it was booze. <laughs> it was uh, Tullamore Dew. Uh, I got into uh, liking that uh, a couple years ago. And uh, you were just firing too many hard questions, and I needed a drink. <laughs> uh, 
uh, as a singer-songwriter, uh, the guitar is your musical instrument. Yeah, yeah, I also play the harmonica. <laughs> but you started, <laughs> but you started with the guitar. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me about how oh. you learned to play the guitar, your first guitar. Actually, uh, I, actually I, I started with the drums, but that's a whole other story. You bring that up another time. Okay, go okay. ahead. So you guitar. started with the drums, but from a singer-songwriter perspective, oh, yeah. you started yeah. at, by playing guitar. Yeah, so, or, like I said, the tennis racket. You played the tennis racket, <laughs> yeah. and then you graduated to an actual guitar. Yes. So tell me yeah. about buying your first guitar, what you bought, why oh, you bought it. Uh, I bought a, uh, an, I bought an El Degas, uh, an electric. Uh, I had saved up all my money, and I came into Toronto. Uh, I was a, it was March break, and uh, my Uncle Rudy took me around to places uh, looking for uh, guitars. And uh, we came to a pawn shop, but it had it had to, was it pawn? No, because it was a new guitar, so it wasn't a pawn shop. It was a little music store, and uh, he tried it out, and he said, "Yeah, this is a good little guitar." And so that was my my first guitar. I have to go get it uh, now. Uh, I had the uh, it was my El, and I had that had that El Degas for I play. I still have it. I, for, for many years until I upgraded to my first uh, Telecaster. So why did you go with uh, an electric guitar first rather than an acoustic guitar? That's a great question. Um, electric guitar is easier to play. You don't oh. have, you know, yeah, way, way easier to play. First of all, it's mostly noise. You can just make a lot of noise. Because uh, there was, a, I played out of a little PA system. I didn't even have a guitar amp. I had like a little PA, so it's not even designed for a guitar. Um, it's just easier to play and um, it was cooler. <laughs> it was just cooler. I want an electric guitar. Just that like, was oh. the answer I was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> I was years before I would get an acoustic guitar. This is my, uh, this is my first guitar. This is uh, the El Degas that my Uncle Rudy uh, took me out to, uh, to go and buy. I think it cost me, uh, I think it cost me $350. How old is uh, that guitar? Oh. Uh, when did you buy it? I was, uh, I got it in 19, uh, I got it in 1981. I got it in March 1981. Okay, 40 years. It's for, yeah, yeah, it's 40 years old. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Still in good condition. It's in great condition. Uh, I don't, there's, there's very few marks on it. Uh, Have you had to do anything to it to no, keep it up? Like no. new strings oh, or yeah, always, like yeah, that? Oh yeah, always, yeah, yeah. I, I replaced more strings that they, uh, they got, you know, because they, uh, they, they rusted, but you know, you asked me earlier about why an electric guitar as opposed to acoustic guitar. Yeah. You don't have to do too much with this to get girls. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to play a little bit. You gotta, you gotta work a little harder with the acoustic. As soon as you, heck, you just gotta walk around with a guitar case, electric guitar case. <laughs> Um, is you know, there um, is there a smoke detector battery in this one too? Yeah, no, <laughs> if there was, it's, it's no, it definitely wouldn't be uh, uh, working anymore. I know that the very first time that I touched an electric guitar was one of my cousins, my older cousins, and it was sitting on a stand, and I walked, uh, I walked past it, and I just remember doing this, just to, I don't know if it's getting picked up. I did this to the, uh, and I go. Wow, that sound. And I just, there was something that just inspired me about this metallic, uh, mechanical kind of, just, it just was just waiting to be plugged in. Uh, you mentioned bar chords. Explain that a little bit. What's bar chords? Uh, okay, well, it's going to be maybe difficult because it'll be in a, in a mirror. Can you see my hand? Yeah. Okay, so if you normally play, uh, you normally play a guitar, you know, there's all the, you know, A, C, D, all the... My guitar's out of tune. So, when you're, uh, when you're playing guitar and you're playing open strings, so it'd be like A, C, D, you know, G, uh, that's, we've just put playing in the open position, but bar chords, you play them all, like, as soon as you use your finger across, it's a, it's a bar chord. And it's great for newbie uh, guitar players because there's only two positions. There's this E position, which is the same as when you play E here. Now you just add, you just use those three fingers and you just go G, A, B, C, D. And you can get all your chords without ever having to make a, having to make a change. And then there's the A position when you play A, and some people play A like this. And, um, and then you can just do C, D, E, F, G. So it allows you to, so much,
So it, it you just have so much you can do uh, without having to remember oh, where's all your where all your fingers going to be. You can just keep going up and down the uh, uh, the fretboard. Oh, that's good to know. What song are you playing for us today, Leo? Uh, today will be uh, Lazy Cat. And what's Lazy Cat about? Um, well, it used to be Lazy Susan uh, from one of those you know, those things that you have in the in the in the kitchen. And the song just never went anywhere, and uh, so it always just uh, w w was put on the shelf for years and years. And then the uh, the ice storm of 2013, while the ice storm was going on, uh, I pulled it out, and in amongst the uh, the ice that was hitting my roof, I, I worked on it, uh, I changed around the words a lot, uh, played with the music, played with the melody, and came up with uh, something uh, much different. I brought it to the band, and uh, once Rob bought into it, I knew we were on our way because he's always pretty tough. Okay. Well, the song came to me straight from the heart. Didn't make up the words because I live the part. I'll keep it short and I'll hold the refrain. If you like it, tell me and I'll play it again. I look at you where you look away I know a smile ain't too far away And I'm up tomorrow, what I don't know today But if I was blind, would you stay with me? Whoa, oh, oh, lazy cat sitting out on the sun Working on my life, what you been working on? Whoa, oh, oh, it's just the same old song Come in here and tell me where did I go wrong? This song, uh, I liked. I liked how it was going with the the country flavor. Uh, I liked the twanginess uh, in the song. Um, it was a little bit difficult to record uh, because I want to have it start off slow. Much easier to do it like acoustically to do it to start off slow. It was a little bit harder to record because. Something that we'll get into in another episode is uh, back again with the click track. Uh, it's, it's two different tempos, so we had to. It, it just it just made it uh, tricky to to record. Your acoustic guitar. I notice it's plugged in. So does that really make it acoustic? Like, what's the deal with a oh, pl plugged okay. in guitar? And you've got a microphone here. Like, what's this whole setup? Okay, you have? so I uh, let me turn those off. Uh, this guitar, like the, the, this acoustic, has a, a pickup inside it. Uh, it runs on a battery. You need to uh, you need to unplug your cable because if you leave the cable plugged in, that battery's dead in a day. So you need to always unplug your cable. Is it a rechargeable battery? Uh, I'm not that green, oh, okay. <laughs> so the answer is no. You know, yeah, uh, musicians are notoriously throwing out nine volt batteries constantly because we leave things plugged in. All the pedals that have batteries in them, oh, you left the cable plugged in. As soon as you walk into your rehearsal studio and you see, ah, oh, I'm plugged into that pedal, yeah, that battery's dead. And there's yet one. I got, in fact, I've got a, I've got a fire alarm. <laughs> I got a smoke detector missing a battery right now because it's inside this. Oh. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so it's always the smoke detectors that take the beating. <laughs> so, uh, so I, I use both. Uh, I use the the pickup that's inside the the acoustic, uh, right there. So now this is the this is uh, from the that's the pickup uh, of the inside the acoustic. I'll turn that one off, and this is the uh, the microphone. And then I can have both. And that just allows me more a fuller sound because oh, I've been cold and lonely for so long. With a hole in my head, the pen gets in, my memory is gone. I looked up to the stars, I cried in the sea, I knocked on the earth and I hugged some trees. Don't ask me what I was thinking of, knowing I'm with you, I feel love. Whoa, oh, oh, lazy cat sitting out in the sun, I'm working on my life. What you been working on Whoa, oh, oh, it's just the same old song Come in here and tell me where did I 
gotta go grow. So tell us about the video for Lazy Cat. Um, well, it was inspired uh, going to the Orono Fall Fair. Uh, lots of colors. It was a uh, colorful and lovely day and we had the, the camera and the stabilizer uh, with us. So we took lots of uh, video at the, uh, the Fall Fair. The song is country-ish with a nice twangy uh, feel. So it seemed like uh, it seemed like a good fit, and lots of uh, lots of farm equipment, lots of tractors, lots of tractors, <laughs> farm lots equipment. of tractors, no trains, yeah, but uh, lots of tractors. Okay, and a cat makes an appearance. Yeah, that's right. That serendipitously, and, yeah, right? Very much so. That cat was not so, old. and in fact, I'd even see a couple of those shots of the cat <laughs> got in there. Go, oh, I got to keep those now. Yeah. yeah. And what about in in the editing of the video? Uh, were there any specific effects or techniques that you used in the Video editing. Yeah, um, used a lot of uh, used a lot of slow mo, a little bit of uh, speed up, just to try and fit uh, make a, a frame fit into the the beats of the song. So I sometimes do that. I'll I'll just just tweak it the the the, the speed a little wee bit or up or down just to get it into to, to match up. But I use a little extra slow mo in uh, a few of the shots just for dramatic effect because you know me. Okay, what video editing software do you use? I use. Uh, I use Wondershare Filmora 9 uh, and they send me nasty letters uh, almost daily to say, upgrade, upgrade. I go, I don't want to upgrade. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, this works fine for me, but uh, yeah, so I use Filmora 9, but I got to go up to whatever the, the latest one is. And in fact, if, if you're seeing this, it's still working. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I guess we'll probably have a future episode where you'll go into a little bit more detail of how to use the editing software, right? Oh yeah, I, I like to do I like to do a whole episode just on the uh, videoing uh, software, just to show all the little tips and tricks that uh, I've learned uh, along the way. Another little one I used on this uh, video was uh, something called Focus Color. So I it I. I can just grab one color in the scene. So whether it be a, a red combine or a blue tractor or something, and then that's the only color. And it has kind of a, it has a cool effect and everything else is black and white. Oh, neat. Okay, yeah. cool. I've been cold and lonely for so long. With a hole in my head, the pain gets in, my memory is gone. I looked up to the stars, I cried in the sea, I knelt on the earth and I hugged some trees. Don't ask me what I was thinking of, no, when I'm with you, I feel love. Whoa, oh, oh, lazy cat sitting out on the sun, I'm working on my life. What you been working on? Whoa, oh, oh, it's just the same old song. Come in here and tell me where did I go wrong? The song came to me, struck from the heart. Didn't make up the words, cause I live the part. I'll keep it short and I'll hold the refrain. If you like it, tell me and I'll play it again. Well, that was a first. <laughs> uh, got all the way through it in one take. That's uh, that never happens. Yeah, very good, very yeah. good. I'm, uh, I'm quite happy with that. It was uh, not the uh, not the best take, but uh, all in one take. That was uh, makes me happy. Good. Uh, so for such a cheerful song, <laughs> cheerful upbeat song. Oh, I know where this is going. <laughs> you got this line with a hole in my head. The pain gets in. My memory is gone. What's that about? Well. I'm a I'm a pretty tortured soul, so uh, in behind the uh, in behind the smile sometimes you know there's the the, the tears of a clown. <laughs> I was just gonna say tears of a clown, Smokey Robinson. Yeah. <laughs> well, that brings us to the end of episode two. Uh... Thanks, Leo, for sharing your your thoughts and wisdom with us. <laughs> Very little wisdom. <laughs> Lots of thoughts, little wisdom. And uh, uh, everyone watching, keep an eye out for episode three please, coming soon. Please do. Yes. Thank you. Have Thanks. a nice day.